So thanks for inviting me. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to talk, uh, talk about cyber war and cyber conflict. I think that's it's an important topic that uh, we need to think a lot of at, at many levels, at, at, the, uh, at the personal level, at the corporate level, and also at the national level. And there's a lot of stuff going on, and especially recently. I think it's worth talking about. So I'm going to spend some, uh, some time on that. So last June, I participated in a debate on cyber war. It was in Washington, D.C., and it was an actual debate. There were two sides, and there was winning and losing. And it was the, the, the topic of the debate, the proposition we were debating is the risk of cyber war has been grossly exaggerated. So it's an interesting topic because it's not really about policy, it's about language. Right? It's whether the risk has been exaggerated or not. And uh, there were, it was two on two. I was on the side of, yes, it had been exaggerated. It was myself and Mark Rotenberg, who uh, is the director of EPIC, the Electronic Privacy Information Center, a pro-privacy group in Washington, D.C. On the other side was uh, Admiral Mike McConnell, former head of the NSA, uh, now a vice president at the government contractor Booz Allen Hamilton, working in cyber war, and Jonathan Zittrain, who is a law professor at Harvard. Uh, it, it was a good debate. It was a, a packed audience, and and we lost the audience. And the voting was interesting. They polled the the audience at the beginning of the debate, and then polled them at the end of the debate. And the side that changed the most minds won. That's how they we figured out who won. And our side lost. The audience believed that the threat of cyber war had not been grossly exaggerated. This this in a lot of ways surprised me. I mean, I had a list of cyber war exaggerations. I'm going to read some of them to you later. It seemed kind of obvious that the risk had been grossly exaggerated. And in the you know, six or so months after that debate, I've been thinking about what happened. And I think I understand a lot more about how the debate is playing out in our society you know, based on what happened in that room. So here are some examples of, of so cyber war hype. Uh, Mike McConnell, who was on the other side of the debate I had, wrote in the Washington Post, February of last year, the United States is fighting a cyber war today and we're losing. Right? So he said we're at cyber war. Uh, I had a U.S. senator talk about uh, cyber Katrina. I had quotes about cyber 9-11, cyber Pearl Harbor, cyber Armageddon. Right? I mean, this, this is what exaggerations look like. Uh, I had an article headline from The Independent, an Australian newspaper. Hackers declare cyber war on Australia. Right? Cyber war is so easy, even kids can do it. Uh, Amit Yaran, who is a cybersecurity policy czar in the United States, he was the second one. He said, uh, cyber 9-11 has happened over the last 10 years, but it's happened so slowly we don't see it. A quote that's so bizarre I can't even begin to understand it. I had newspaper headlines, uh, China, uh, uh, Germany attacks China for starting the cyber war. In case you didn't know, Germany and China are at war right now. Uh, cyber war declared as China hunts for the West's intelligence secrets from the Wall Street Journal. Cyber blitz, that was a new one, hits U.S. and Korea. I mean, hyping cyber war is actually a surprisingly common thing we do. So let's look at some of the examples of, of, of cyber war, of things the media and experts have been pointing to as saying this, these are examples of what cyber war is. Uh, first one is Estonia. In April of 2007, there was a large denial of service attack against the Estonian government, effectively. Estonian government websites. Uh, it wasn't unprecedented. It wasn't the biggest we've ever seen. There's a, a lot of media myths about the attack. It was just a regular big denial of service attacks. Those of us in computer security have seen them many times before. It wasn't particularly exciting. It wasn't particularly different. It was against a government. Uh, Russia was blamed because there were ethnic tensions uh, between the Russia and Estonia at the time. Uh, Russia never admitted they did it. In fact, in fact there's, there's only been one person ever convicted of these denial of service attacks, and it was a 22-year-old Russian living in Tallinn 
who is annoyed that a Russian statue is being removed from the city. So maybe cyber war is so easy that even kids can do it. Uh, October of 2007, this isn't talked about a lot, uh, Israel, the Israeli government mounted a sneak air attack against a Syrian nuclear research center. I mean, they bombed it. Uh, this wasn't a cyber attack. This was, you know, actual airplanes flying overhead, dropping bombs. But before they did that, uh, there's a reasonably widespread belief that Israel used cyber attacks to disable some of the air defense systems inside Syria and actually and neighboring countries to enable them to get in and out quicker. So th keep this in mind when we talk about Stuxnet later. Uh, Brazil, 2007, this, was, this story was used as a centerpiece of a 60 Minutes episode. 60 Minutes is a U.S. news program talking about cyber war. And in 2007, there were a series of blackouts in Brazil. And the belief is, and, and like a lot of these stories, nothing's confirmed, that these were cyber extortion attacks that a group of criminals were able to infiltrate the uh, power plants, they threatened to turn off power, they demonstrated they can do it, and extorted money out of the uh, Brazilian either government or the power companies, we're not really sure which. Uh, maybe this happened, maybe it didn't. There's other reports saying that the blackouts were caused by insulators filled with soot. But this, this has been promulgated as an example of cyber war. Uh, Georgia, in, in August of 08, was similar to Estonia. It was a series of cyber attacks against the government blamed on, on, the, on Russia. But this time it was a little different because these attacks pre uh, preceded an actual land invasion, right? Troops and tanks going from Russia into Georgia. Uh, again, we don't know if the uh, Russian government was responsible for this or if it was like Estonia, effectively kids playing politics. You know, uh, ethnic Russians on the side of Russia wanting to help. And this is the way they did that. Right? R Russia has, has never admitted involvement. On the other hand, they weren't really quick to you know, send the police after whoever was doing it. So they certainly approved of what was happening. So you know, think of these, these four stories and, and then think back about my debate on cyber war. One of the problems we had very early on in that debate is that there's no good definition of war in cyberspace. In a sense, the debate of whether the threat of cyber war has been grossly exaggerated depends on how you define the word cyber war. If you define it as war, then sure it's been grossly exaggerated. If you define it to include Denial of service attacks. I mean, you know, think about what happened in Estonia. It's an odd definition of war. It's like the enemy lands on your beaches, charges your shores, and then they all get in line in front of you at the post office. Right? That's a denial of service attack. It's an odd thing. It's an odd way of waging war. But if you use that expansive definition to include, you know, attacks against Brazilian power plants, or these denial of service attacks, you'll get a very different answer to whether the threat has been grossly exaggerated. And we don't have a good definition of war in cyberspace. We don't know what it looks like. We don't know when it starts. We don't know how to know when it's over. Right? And it's not just the media. It's not just politicians. Even security experts don't have a good definition of cyber war. I mean, clearly it's a rhetorical war, right? We are not fighting an actual war in cyberspace, right? Duh. It's more like, you know, uh, the war on drugs, the war on terror, the war on crime, or the, you know, from the 50s, the war on poverty. You know, Americans are really weird on the subject of war. We, we hate using the word to talk about actual wars, but we love using the word when there isn't an actual war. We like rhetorical wars. We like the, the phrase war, talk about non-wars. We hate to talk about actual wars with that word. 